Welcome to today's webinar on the NAOP Sentiment Survey and Index. My name is Sandy Hudson and I will be your host. With us today is Tom Hamilton, the Gerald Ferguson Distinguished Chair in Real Estate at Roosevelt University's Chicago School of Real Estate. Previously, he was a commercial real estate professor at the University of St. Thomas Opus College of Business. Tom is the founder and president of Carvel Hamilton Real Estate Analytics ProTech. He is also a NAOP Distinguished Fellow. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for being with us today. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I see that there are going to still be some more attendees coming in. We're sitting at about 19 people. That's a good sign. I think people will be coming in. And since it is recorded, if people do miss something, they can um, catch up a little bit later at the, for the beginning of this session. Uh, as Sandy mentioned, if you have questions, please do uh, put those into the uh, question area, the question box or chat area that you have, and we'll get back to them. But as you notice on this uh, slide that says sentiment index table of contents in the lower right-hand corner, there's a slide number. It's number three. If you have a specific question, uh, please type the slide number in the lower right as well. That'll help us, uh, or at least help me, if you have questions, we can go back to one of those, to that particular slide to answer what you may have. Just as kind of a roadmap for what we're going to be talking about today, we've broken this uh, seminar into three components, a little bit of background and purpose, uh, talk about the process of how the index is computed based on the 10 questions that are part of the survey, and then we're going to look at four, uh, four specific questions uh, and look at how you as a member of NAP can uh, interpret that information and understand what it means as it goes forward. So what we want to do now is kind of move forward and talk a little bit about that. Okay, when we, when we look at this, we think in, fact, in terms of most of the studies that, it, that exist in the marketplace are historic. They look at data that has happened in the past. It's kind of a rear view mirror approach to the real estate market. And so what we want to be able to do with this survey is to uh, look at these individual questions and how they are being responded by the survey participants as to what each individual thinks will look like in the marketplace a year in advance whether it's employment figures, cost of construction materials, availability of capital, and so forth. The individual nine questions that are used to comprise the index uh, are important bits of information that we can see about specific components of the commercial real estate development market, but then they are rolled up into a single number to give us a consensus as to what the membership believes the direction of the commercial real estate market will be one year forward. And this project is, is unique, uh, relatively unique in the marketplace because this is a forward-looking survey. And again, it's different from what we might be looking at in the past using uh, sales transactions and actual projects that were being built. So hopefully this is viewed as a benefit to the membership because not only can we get information about what is happening in the marketplace, but where do the thought leaders and the development community leaders believe the commercial real estate market will be one year into the future? So let's talk a little bit about this one number, this uh, sentiment index. Well, what we have with this are a series of factors that affect the commercial real estate development marketplace. Um, and again, the responses that the survey is asking for is what the individuals who are re replying, what they have as expectations about the future. And again, it's one, it's one year in advance. Over time, what we're hoping to have out of this is the ability to look at where were people thinking we would be 12 months ago and compare it to the actual position where we are today. And we'll see that's where hopefully the value of this survey will come through. And we'll talk more about this when we get into looking at some of the individual components near the end of the survey today. 
what are some other bits that we need to understand about this survey? Well, when we look at a particular response, whether it's the composite or if it's the actual questions that are uh, posed to the respondents, our outcome can either be positive or negative. I guess it could be neutral as well, which means there's no change. But anytime there is a positive indicator for that particular question, that means that is a good sign for the commercial real estate development marketplace. So it could be plus 0.1, it could be plus 5. Anything with a positive is a good indicator. Similarly, anything with a negative on it is a uh, a detraction, uh, a detractor to the marketplace, a negative sign for the market. So there are two things that we're looking at, whether it's positive or negative and how strongly positive or negative that factor may be. Currently, uh, we're using this survey to create a single set of indicators for the full spectrum of commercial real estate pro product type in the marketplace. And we're also looking at it on a nationwide basis. Our goal is, is that we will have sufficient sampling, meaning enough people will be submitting information to this survey maybe the next time or even by next spring that we might even be able to take these responses and do a more specific analysis by region uh, or by property type. But at the current time, what we're doing is that we're just trying to find one, one indicator for the commercial real estate development market as a whole for all, across all property types. But again, like I said, our goal is, is to get a greater response so that we can possibly have a, uh, a better indicator that can be moving forward. Possibly this would be done by uh, even local chapters in the future. But as it stands right now, we've just come out of the beta test and had our first uh, live test of the survey and we have some pretty interesting results. So let's look at the questions that go into the survey. What we're looking at here are real estate fundamentals, factors that affect the commercial real estate development marketplace. And again, as we look at these various factors, these, these fundamentals, uh, we are looking at a scoring, a scaling system from basically one to five. We take that scaling from one to five and we just uh, standardize it to have a mean of zero so that anything that's negative is below one, anything that's positive is above one. So as we look at these general indicators, we can say that whenever employment has a positive figure, that is a good sign for, them, for the real estate marketplace. Same for occupancy rates. If it's a positive number, it's positive in the marketplace. When we look at questions or look at the responses to both face rents and effective rents, we're actually able to get a little extra information on that. Not only when face rents or effective rents are positive, is that a good sign for the market? We can look at the differential between uh, the face rents and effective rents to give us a potential indication as to where we are in our movement through the real estate cycle. So as the effective rents are approaching face rents, we're finding a sign that this is this might be a sign that the marketplace is stronger uh, or is expected to be stronger a year from now. And if the face rents versus effective rent differential starts to widen, maybe we're going, reaching through a peak in the market and maybe we're going into a softening phase. So not only can we just look at the raw positive negative nature of these individual questions, what we're able to do is to infer other information from it. And then lastly, the tenth question is a response by the individuals to what they believe the general sentiment of the commercial real estate market will be one year from today. This is also used internally through the index as a check figure because as we go through and talk about the construction of the composite index, this particular question is a way for us to validate that the individual responses on the above nine fundamentals are being consistently answered with a general sentiment. 
So in, in summary, this general sentiment question is added to the series of questions to give us a test of reasonableness and consistency in the, in the creation of our index number. And again, that is a single index that we can hold up and say, yes, we believe that the commercial real estate market should be stronger a year from today than where it is. And that's what the first response was. So in order to construct our uh, index, we have to look at some information surrounding that. Well, I'm not going to go through in depth and detail on how the index is computed, but I want to raise some key points here for people to understand. What we're doing is, is we're trying to measure the typical response, what we call the mean. And then we also want to look at how consistently the respondents are around that mean variable. So if basically everybody agreed on a single question, it would have a very low variance. And that very low variance would be indicative of a high degree of consistency amongst all the participants. And that high degree of consistency is a strong indicator of that particular question. Conversely, if there is a not so strong consistency there is or, or a, a high co coefficient of variation, then there's less consistency and we have, we have less confidence in that particular question as an indicator of what the overall market would be. So we're going to look at the tightness or looseness of the distributions here, both with a graph and with some numbers to help you understand how this is actually used in the survey. So this is a simple graph that goes through and it compares two particular questions. What we're looking at here are face rents, which are represented by both the blue bars and the blue curve, and employment, or what's, what is your likelihood that you plan to add employees in the next 12 months? As we can see, and it'll be evident on the next slide where we have numbers, the average score for both of these was positive, meaning it was greater than zero, above the average. However, the consistency of respondents amongst everybody who was a participant in the survey was quite a bit different between how they answered the question regarding face rents and adding employees. What we can see with the face rents, the blues, is, is that the rents are fairly tightly packed. The, the tightly packed data it does not have a wide dispersion from left to right, and it is fairly highly peaked, centered in the middle and taller. What this indicates to us is more consistency in the response to this question amongst all of the respondents. Conversely, we look at, when we look at the question regarding ad employees, it had a similar mean response, an average typical response, but there was quite a bit more variation in those responses. And when we have a wider variation, we have less certainty. And with less certainty, we're going to assign a lesser weight. So in this particular example, we're, gonna, we're going to see that face rents and at employees have similar typical levels, but the weight that's going to be assigned to the index is going to be much more heavily weighted toward face rents because it's a more consistent response. So as we look at the, the numeric uh, components of how the survey respondents answered these, these two questions, we can see that both at employees and face rents had mean scores that were above the midpoint. And again, it's a five-point scale, so three is in the middle. Anything greater than three would be a positive indicator. So adding employees, 3.74, face rents of 3.58. Not much of a difference between the two uh, mean scores. They're both above average. So that we would expect that the market, um, in the marketplace, there would be more employees a year from now, and face rents would be higher than they are now. However, when we start looking at standard deviation and coefficient of variation, we can see that the face rents, which was the blue uh, data on the prior uh, chart, that was a much tighter distribution. The standard deviation for face rents is lower than that for adding employees, and as such, 
the coefficients of variation are about a two to one differential. What that translates into is the weighting in the index. By adding employees, we, it was given a weight of 8.1% for face rents was given 14.4. Now if everything in the index was weighted equally, meaning all of the responses had the same distribution of potential uh, of actual responses, every, of every one of the nine questions would have an 11.1 .1 weight in the index. So what this tells us is that employees is going to be given less influence in the composite face rents is going to be given more influence in the composite because 14.4 is greater than 11 and 8.1 is, is less than 11. So that's in general terms what we're going to be looking at. What we want to look now is, is at the four individual questions that are very important for this uh, index for this time around. What we have here is for the questions on faith, uh, on employment. Employment here, things to take away from this as, as you are reading through the survey, excuse me for a moment, sorry about that, it is allergy season and it's started to hit. What we have here is the actual, or excuse me, is the index indicated level for employment from the two beta surveys which are represented February 2015 and September 2015, and the most recent survey that was launched uh, just over a month ago in March of 2016. The key indicators here is, is that all three time periods when the survey was, was taken show that the respondents typically said that they were likely to be adding employees within the next 12 months. So we just look at the, at the uh, left column of information where it goes from very likely, likely, no change, and down, we can see that um, for all three periods that the chance that that, or the likelihood that that company was going to be hiring was fairly good. And even though there might have been some that were saying it was unlikely there to add, the typical response was above. Now, when we look at these numbers, the other thing that we did is, is we took the original data scale and converted it to a 10-point scale, going from a minus 5 to a plus 5. What that does is it allows us to use 0 as a midpoint, which would indicate no change. It would be neutral. It also gives us another way to look at the, look at the data analysis over time. If we look at the difference from September 15 to, to March 2016, the values go from 2.68 to 1.85. Again, positive meaning that there was more likely to be adding employees than not. But the, but the score fell 0.83 points. Since we're on a 10-point scale, that reduction of 0.83 would be equivalent to saying about an 8.3 reduction in, in the confidence of adding employment over the next 12 months. It's still likely, but it's less likely in this particular example. So overall, employment outlook is very good. Uh, it's expected to be good over the next 12 months based on the respondents in this most recent survey. When we look at the question regarding face rents, uh, where do you believe face rents will be in 12 months? Again, we can look at this chart and we see that face rents are positive. They're above zero. So what's the how did the respondents answer? Well, they said that face rents should be higher. So we just look at the look at the scale on the left uh, left indicator, and it's and it's in the higher range. It's above the same, but it's not close to much higher. So when we look at this, the overall growth in rents is remain is expected to remain steadily positive over the next 12 months. But as we can see from September 15 to March 16 there was a slight reduction of 0.3. And again, applying that to uh, our 10-point scale, it's about a 3% reduction. So it's, it is, it's less good, but it's still in the very good, it's still in the good category that face rents should be higher in the next 12 months. 
when we look at construction labor, the reason we brought this uh, variable into this uh, uh, presentation is because this one factor of the nine individual components that are in the index was the least negative, or excuse me, was the most negative uh, of all the indicators, and which in turn was the largest contributing factor to keeping the overall index uh, brought it down the, the greatest proportion. So again, we look at the results here, and we see that they're all below zero. And if you look at the question, it says, where do you believe the cost of construction labor will be in 12 months? Pretty much everybody was saying higher. So when we're looking at that 0.18, it's below zero, and it's toward the, the answer of higher over the next 12 months. A good thing of note here is, is that when we compare it to September 15's answer, the, the typical response was actually closer to the same, meaning that was a positive indicator. Even though it's a negative number and that's bad for the index and it would be considered not a good sign for the industry, the direction of change is in the right direction to make a better indicator of what we expect the commercial real estate development marketplace to be one year from today. And again, the 0.33 uh, change in the in the index component on a 10-point scale would be like an increase, an improvement of like 3.3 percent. So we're still we're, we're seeing an improvement in construction costs. They are a hindrance to the development marketplace, but it's at least moving in the right direction. Which brings us to our next question. This is the general sentiment question. This is the tenth question that's asked in the survey. And what we use it for is that check figure. Because we're going to compare this tenth question to the composite figure that is computed for the nine other factors in the sentiment survey. And this is an overall question. It's asked as, the, as one of the last questions, say, where do you see the commercial real estate industry marketplace 12 months from now? As we look at this from the original beta survey in February 15 all the way till uh, the most recent one, which was last month in March of 16, there's been a steady decline, but it's still in positive territory. It's still above zero. So we can look at this and say that overall, typical respondents concluded that the market is, ex is expected to improve, but it doesn't look quite as positive as what it was six months prior or even one year ago. So maybe we are going through a, through a slight change in, in the... Uh, where we are in the real estate cycle, but we're still at least in an expansion phase of the marketplace. It's still positive. Now, the other thing is, again, we can look at that. That's about a 4% reduction, but that's not the final thing that we do in the survey. What we like to do in the survey, then, is to say, based on individual responses that the uh, participants gave on the first nine questions, how does that compare to how they actually answered this one question that is a direct question about general sentiment. When we look at the actual score of 0.58, that was the average for all of the respondents in this survey, it compares very favorably with what our composite index was. And the composite index for this last survey was 0.6. Now, a 0.6 versus 0.58, there isn't much of a difference, and it was within the margin of error on our survey, which was about 5%. So overall, we can look at this and say um, there looks like to be a positive change for employment. It looks like uh, face rents are going to be improving. It looks like construction costs, materials are going to be improving, and the overall marketplace is doing well. Uh, or is expected to do well over the next 12 months. So that's where we stand with the survey right now, and I don't see any questions, and I know there are some out there, so uh, I'll ask, does Margarita or Sandy have any questions that have come through? Uh, yes, Tom. Um, why do you measure both face rents and effective rents? Y yes, that goes back to the the point I made earlier with regard to the 
uh, questions, and I'm looking for the particular slide that 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 relates to. I'll just come back here. Okay, here it is. It's on page seven. So when we look at this particular question, face rents and effective rents, when, when the two rents are converging with each other, so if face rents are moving up and effective rents are moving up uh, together, that's a sign that we're going to have better income. There's, there are good market fundamentals for that particular type of real estate. If it turns out that face rents are expected to go up but effective rents are expected to go down, that might be a sign that there may be more tenant improvements or other concessions that need to be made in the marketplace uh, in order to get deals done. And so we're looking at these two in, in tandem with each other to not only get a direction of rent, but really what is the direction of the, the, the value that is being added to these projects. And uh, as Tom, long as the... Your, your um, microphone is, um, it's, the volume's lowering. So it's getting okay. hard to hear you. Uh, sorry. Is it better now? Uh, no, it's really quiet. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find a control for that. I haven't touched anything. Um, let me try one more thing. Is that better? Still No, low? it's still really quiet. Um, let's see if I can find a control for that. Um, I just okay, turned it up. Is that... okay. okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, is, it, is it okay now? Yep, that's fine. Okay. So when we have face rents and effective rents, I'm not sure how much people got on that. Um, so if face rents and effective rents are moving together, that's a sign that we're in a fairly stable market and that there's value added uh, and, and the developers are able to get the value out of the projects. However, when effective rents could be going down relative to face rents, that might be a sign that there are concessions in the marketplace that would require, uh, or that would result in, in less value to the development process. So that's why I said there's, there's actually two things that we get by measuring these individual rent characteristics at the same time, is not only the level of rent, but what's the strength of that rent in the marketplace. Okay, we have another question. Um, please tell us a bit more about the beta test. How many people were involved? I think you mentioned 5,000 participants. Was, the, um, was that in the beta test or were you working with a smaller group? Oh, it was a much smaller group. Uh, I don't recall the exact number in the beta test, but uh, it was a fairly small number. I think it was less than 100. The 5,000 that we're mentioning here is that's how many people were who were sent a request to uh, answer the survey. And I believe we had, even uh, in the beta test, we were, I think, under 100 people in each of the two beta tests. Okay. Um, how many of these surveys need to be conducted in order to get a good reading? Okay. Uh, usually what, we're, what we need to have here are a series of points. I mean, you need two points to draw a straight line, uh, but really to get any kind of an indication as to what the usefulness of the survey would be, most likely four to five points. So we're looking at, uh, depending on if we can use the beta tests as part of our uh, tracking as we're coming through, probably by next spring, if and if not next spring, by the fall of 2017, we will have a good solid track record that will uh, help us decide as to how significant the, um, the index is actually measuring outcome in the marketplace. So again, what we're looking at would be, for instance, I'll go over to the last slide here where we see the overall uh, sentiment. So we're on slide 14 here. One year ago, based on the February 2015 beta, um, the, mar the respondents said that the overall real estate market was going to be better in 2016 than it would be in 2015. And I believe that's pretty much what we've seen uh, as a result in the marketplace. Things are still going well. 
where we haven't found a contraction in the marketplace yet. Another one has to come over here when we talk about employment. A year ago in February 2016, the response was likely, uh, 2.85, likely that companies would be adding employees. And I think what has actually happened since February 2015, that there have been a, uh, a, a fair number of new employees added to the commercial development market than more, more, more have entered the, the employment ranks than have left the employment ranks in the last 12 months. So we can use this on a short-term manner with three or four data points, but once we get to five, six, or seven total data points, then we'll be able to see how consistently the forecasts are from the member sentiment to actual outcome in the marketplace. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Please type them in the questions box if you have any other questions. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Tom, thanks for a great presentation and explaining the new NAOP Sentiment Survey and Index to our audience. Thank you for listening to our session and have a good day. Thank you, everybody.